Let's just do Christian. Honestly. Let's do let's do Christian. Uh, because everybody wants to see it. And then we can do a different segment after that. Let's do part part 43 of Christian, bro. Let's do it. Here we go, baby. Here we go. Yeah, what Amazing made him this way? way? Oh, I got it. What's the next one? What is the attraction? Forgot already. What keeps us fascinated? I don't know, dude. This is the story of Chris Chen. True, it is the story of Chris Chen. Or Rich and Washington Tower. Part XL3. I, I wear a 3XL. Hey, very cool. On November 29th, 2014, members of the Quickie Forums noticed that the most recent episode of the Sonic Boom TV show featured a scene in which Sonic the Hedgehog eats a burger that, to his disappointment, has pickles on it. Four members debated whether oh. or not this was a subtle reference to Christian and Sonichu's known hatred of pickles. <laughs> is this real? Dude, this is awesome. I guarantee you. I, 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 I want to believe that, like, yes, it has everything to do. It has everything to do with that. It has everything to do with it. Because do you remember, like, earlier we saw... Um, I don't remember the specifics, but there was like this girl and this guy doing a sweepstakes for like Sega or something, and the girl mentioned Sonic Chew, and the guy was just like, "Let's move on." So to think it's out of the realm of possibility, you're just wrong. Now, is it an absolute fact? No, you can't. You can't assert that it's uh, that it is an objective truth, of course. But I believe it. I believe it. I believe that one hundred hundred percentile. I believe it. Pickles. I said no pickles. Chris himself later made a Facebook post regarding this moment, asking if it were truly a reference to him, with commenters saying that it was seemingly an intentional slight against his person. On the well, 30th, after being banned from his previous keep so It wouldn't have been a slight. I feel like it would have been almost, it would have been like a, just a funny reference, you know what I mean? Like, if, uh, that, that's not a slight, though. Not, somebody's not trying to, like, take a shot at it. I mean, maybe, but I don't think that's what it would be. Sonic original Facebook group, Chris founded another group for his cause, called Fix Sonic's Arms Immediately, Sega! With its inception, wow. he reposted many of the posts he had made in his previous group, and also added many new ones, which called for people to send to Sega constant complaints until they conceded and redesigned Sonic. Okay. He appointed Kenneth Engelhart, the administrator of the previous group, Sounds like Chris Chan created cancel culture. ...who had kicked Christian out, and also the troll Kim Wilson, as administrators of the new Facebook group. Chris let his thoughts be known through several lengthy posts. Seriously, every day I still see either of those blue-armed fucked games on the store shelves, hear the cartoon is still on the CN, or no recall is taking place. The more pissed I feel. And you know I have messaged those SOBs at Sega a number of times with no response since after seeing the cartoon trailer months ago during the E3 time. It makes me so angry and frustrated being months continuously ago. ignored and swept under the rug to the point where the action and growing from small True. threats to make the managers there listen up. Growing in from small threat, dude. It's, yeah, this fuck is them. crazy. And I never thought I would ever have anything against my favorite color before that trailer. But now I'm looking to slit their throats with my long fingernails to force the total recall Jesus of everything Christ. Sonic Boom to fix the mistake to happen sooner. Ugh. And I have no concern of how much money Sega loses. The recall of everything Sonic Boom and changing the arm color back must happen immediately and right now. Some members of his group objected to his threats of violence, but Christian defended his words, stating that his fingernails were literally long and that many women also had long nails. Well, well, that doesn't matter. Those, the, he, the, it's the threatening part, not the fact that women have longer fingernails. What? <laughs> December second, while Chris and William Elliot Waterman were discussing how he would enact his vengeance against Sega, William asked if Chris would prefer to be called by female pronouns. To which she replied that she would. Whoa! Th what a transition. So wait, now Chris is, is asking to identify as a girl, and Gino instantly says she. Whoa! Very asked woke. If Chris would prefer to be called by female pronouns. To which she replied that she would. Whoa! That was wow. Very impressive. Very good, Gino. Very good. I re I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know, it's so interesting that the conversation about uh, uh it, it's so weird. I remember when I first was first getting to Christian, I was like, yeah, trans woman, like whatever, try to get their pronouns right, but some people just intentionally misgender them. And like, I get it. Whatever you're doing your thing, you're being transphobic or whatever. I guess I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe you just don't think Chris is genuinely transition i don't know maybe that's what it is maybe people think that it's not genuine but here's my thing i don't know my understanding is that like people with autism are disproportionately more likely to identify as trans and maybe that has something to do with like i don't know it might just have something to do with bro what do you think it is like maybe like perception of reality or, or issues i don't know i really don't know i mean we're, we're I'm, I'm out of my element now i don't know I'm, let me just let's just move on let's just move on
William suggested that she could change her name to Christine, which she agreed to accept as her eventual new name. Upon searching the name Christine Chandler, a member of the Quickie Forums uncovered a two-week-old post on the free message board, Void.com, of Christine using that name to advertise herself as a willing sperm donor for lesbian couples, willing oh to help god. either with artificial or preferably natural insemination. Oh my god. Also on December 2nd, Chris wrote... <laughs> Natural, so he said, like, yeah, you can either donate my cum, or I could go cum in your fucking girlfriend. Dude, it's so weird. Why would you ever want to do that? That's so, I mean, like, that's like, I think that's every guy's dream, right? It's like, yeah, I want to, I want to, you know, I guess naturally put it in there or whatever. Um, Some, like, some lesbian couple. Personally, though, why would you want to do that? Like, the girl's not going to enjoy it. Well, maybe she would. I don't know. But she's not attracted to men. It might just, it would just feel weird to me. Anyway on Facebook that she and her mother Barbara would be moving back to their old house within the next few weeks, and so urged people who wanted to purchase her sonnet medallions or drawing commissions to act quick. I'm erect to attention, been following since before you blew up on TikTok, but never caught a live stream, love your videos, I'm always watching. Thank you. Also slightly creepy, but thank you. <laughs> ...as the move would disrupt their production. On December 4th, Chris notified her fictitious gal pal, Renee, that she would be getting her taint piercing re-pierced, since the first piercing ended up, quote-unquote, migrating. The second attempt would be a what is that what does that mean what does it mean it migrated what does that mean that they migrated what did it like disappear yeah but how does it move how does a piercing move oh a gold barbell with jewelry on it it was possibly around this time that Catherine and Chris began discussing their apparent breakup. Katie's side of the conversation was never revealed, but Chris insisted over text messages that they could still remain gal pals, and that she could satisfy her in bed. Oh my god, they could remain gal pals, because they're both girls, guys. That's what it is. <laughs> so they can remain gal pals. I'm just dying here, dude. Okay, sure. With a near 7-inch long penis. And I do think I am entitled in a true, valid relationship with a woman very much like you, because I need the love. And not only that, but I am of royalty in the Western bloodline. Right now, I'm feeling tired, headachy, more depressed and sick of the blatant sarcasm and the ignorance you are showing along with your bitchy ass. And my mother is not fond of you right now either. She calls you common, in your not wanting to be in a relationship with me, stewing all of that for a long while. She felt great depression over her announcement that they were not in a relationship anymore, feeling as if- This is really interesting to me. And what's the the thing that's so interesting is that this is this seems like uh, oh sorry, actually, I should start with me to know this. Trillian Thanks for the sub, brother. Subscribed. What's so interesting to me here is that like um usually Chris doesn't seem to it seems like Chris is starting to confide in his mother with some of this trolling shit where I don't think he used to do that. So it seemed that's the part that's like kind of like what the fuck? It's almost new, I guess, to me. Because now he's getting input from his mom about what he should and shouldn't do, how he should and shouldn't interact. And it just seems like weird because now she's weighing in. She's like, yeah, my mom doesn't like you anyway. And that seems to mean quite a bit to Chris. I want, I mean, it, it makes sense for him to talk to her because he's been getting trolled so long. Um, and he's still getting trolled here, so I guess it just doesn't matter. So, but. As if her heart was melting, like the Lego pieces that perished in her house fire. Incredible. Chris later shared the news with Renee, who she continued to message, despite her having stopped replying since the end of October. Okay. On December 6th, Chris shared a post which wrote that the animated series, Sonic Boom, had been quite successful and would so be renewed for a second season, which angered her. Chris left a comment clarifying that her angered own criticism her. of the changes to the Sonic universe was Sonic's blue arms, suggesting that she watched the show. Chris then wrote- That's it? I mean, <laughs> Chris, 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 Christina, they have autism. She has autism, so I guess like she has a trouble. Is that what it is? That what it is though? Is that really what it is, or is that just like too simple to be like, yeah, they have autism, like, well, it, or or is it more of like an entitlement issue and not being taught correctly to accept things how they are? I don't know. Maybe a little bit of both. A long post asking for her followers to engage in an organized protest against Sega, which included an aggressive message sending campaign. She asked them to include a paragraph that stated the adverse reaction Chris had upon the sight of Sonic the Hedgehog's blue arms, referring to herself in the text with male pronouns. Okay. She then shared the response she got from Sega customer service after sending such a message. They wrote that they could not accept unsolicited suggestions from fans and encouraged her to pursue her creative efforts. The next day, okay. <laughs> she notified her followers that she would not be accepting any more offers for medallions or commissions until Why? the new year, since the Chandlers would be in the middle of moving from their rental home back to their old house. How long is that though? Like, 
It's 2015 here? No. What? This says 2020. And here, it was this... Until the new year. Wait, why does it say 2020 on the Christian video? Oh, it was released in 2020. Oh, okay, right. I looked at the wrong spot. We're in 2014, 2015. Wait, so what's the... Up Wait, <sighs> Oh, so there, dude. Okay, so for an entire month, he's not gonna do commissions because he's moving. She, sorry. What? That's just bizarre to me. Like, I get like, hey guys, maybe I won't be able to do something this week. But you're just like, stif you're literally just like bankrupting yourself at this point. Like, what's the what's the point? What are you doing? It just seems ridiculous. Since the Chandlers would be in the middle of moving from their rental home back to their old house. On December 11th, Chris sent Renee a collection of photos of her strap-on without a dildo attached, and Why? demonstrated how she wore it in order to conceal her penis. Renee had still yet to respond. Great. A day later, Christine messaged her again, telling her that the patch of skin around the jewelry of her taint piercing was beginning to shrink again, so Chris ultimately decided to remove her piercing. Two days later, she asked Renee if she would help Chris put together a modeling portfolio and make her feel more sex-positive. Kristen let Renee know that she believed that trolls were hacking into their text messages and posting their communications on the quickie forums, when in reality, it was the troll playing the part of Renee who was sharing their interactions. Is that actually Renee? Or what, what is that? What is, <laughs> is this actually the troll dressed up? Went by the quickie forums username, Theoden. On December 15th, Chris wrote a cryptic Facebook post telling her followers not to ask her any questions or leave any comments since she felt crappy. The okay. next day, she realized that she could also write her pleas to change Sonic's arm color on Nintendo's online social space, the Miiverse, and posted photos of her message as written on her Nintendo 3DS. Great idea, Chris. She also shared on her Facebook profile that she received a postcard from a ween with a message supporting Sonic the Hedgehog's blue arms. A ween? Chris was not amused by the troll attempt. On December 18th, Quickie Forms member, Skyraider91, who had previously posted numerous photos of Chris's house after the fire and had uncovered old documentation from the Chandler's dumpster, leaked the video that Christian filmed in the aftermath of the family gift exchange of Christmas Day, 2004. The video was part of the director's cut of Chris's, yep, I'm on TV DVD, which was given to okay. Catherine as a present. I wish she was here so that I could talk to her, so she could help me in my quest to get a boyfriend free, 18, 20 year old girl. Okay. It was later revealed. Is that it? We're not going to watch the whole thing? I was excited to watch that. That was like 10 years old. That's like lore. That's like history. Did we watch it already, maybe? And then we... Oh, I don't know. Okay. Interesting. Revealed that Sky Raider was in fact the same troll who had played the part of Katie's cousin Al, who had accompanied the two on their date. Oh my lord. The following day, Chris posted on Facebook that she had downloaded the game Meme Run for the Nintendo Wii U, oh, which so capitalized funny. on popular internet-based image macros oh. and trending memes, believing that her trolls obsessed over them. She found the game to be sensory overloading and determined that all the trolls were seriously stressed, weird, offensive, mentally demented, and screwed up. Probably, yeah. On December 19th, Christine uploaded 43 images on her Fix Sonic's arms immediately, Sega! Facebook page, depicting the new Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> in various TV show stills and marketing photos, oh with his arms altered to be the original color. She pleaded for her followers to mass send the pictures to Sega and Cartoon Network to convince them to change the character's design. Oh, wait. The next day, Chris wrote on Facebook that the family's Christmas would likely be only fair, as they were not ready to finish moving back to their old house before the holidays. So she suggested that people consult her wish list for possible presents or gift cards to send her, strongly suggesting that she desired the big Grand Emporium Lego set, and advised against people sending her gag gifts, such as lumps of coal or copies of the Sonic Boom game. On December 21st, Chris once again posted a link to her mother's car, which was still up for sale for $10,000, and also listed Barbara's phone number for possible inquiries. In the Bro, I, I just don't... Like, it's such a weird thing to me that, like, Chris is like, oh, we need the money so bad. Please give us the money. But then just, like, absolutely refuses to just work for the money. Like, you, like, it's not even, like, dude, you could, you could literally, you could literally just work for it. People are paying you. They're willing to pay you. Just work for it. Oh, it's fucking ridiculous. The comment section, Kim Wilson wrote that Barbara's car's fair market value was around $3,000 and doubted if anyone would choose to pay as much as she desired. Christine True. replied, stating that it was her mother's idea to price it at $10,000. During this time, Chris was still text messaging Catherine, trying to come to an understanding over their breakup. On Christmas Eve, Chris sent her a few finalizing texts. I'll tell you another thing. While I can appreciate it from my mother and pets, but when I get a show of positive emotions or vibes from anyone else, nada, and or a pain thud in my heart, and that is blamed on my autism, and when I am in the depressed and lonely boat like I am AGAIN now, but whatever. Enjoy your Christmas with your parents and the stepmom and other family alive and close, and whoever you end up having for a boyfriend and sweetheart. And because everyone around here locally either hates me and my mother, or overlooks or ignores us, we both are feeling depressed. Okay. At home, we have each other, Goodness. but that's about that's it so. right there. An emotional crappy Christmas. Peaceful day, 
but with everyone outside of our house not appreciating us much at all. On Christmas Day, Chris messaged Renee, letting her know that she had bought figurines for the game Skylanders, and that she also had family time and some bonus cash to keep her spirits up. However, her pets were causing some trouble. She wished that she could wake up in the morning either with a sweetheart by her side, or having magically transformed her body from male to female. It's so weird because now when we talk about Chris, I don't know who we're talking about necessarily because it's like, you know, we're using the she pronouns. So <laughs> it's just confusing. It's just fucking confusing. What the fuck? This is terrifying. What? On December 26th, Chris and her mother drove to Charlottesville's Fashion Square. Oh my while god. Barbara stayed I can't believe that the cops misgendered Chris. It's terrible. What a horrible thing to do. ...herself to have lunch. Chris entered the game retailer, GameStop, from which she had been banned for vandalizing Sonic Boom displays. Oh my god. At the time, user of the site Tumblr, Monozetai, who knew of Chris Chan, was at the store at the same time oh and managed god. to record a short video and later wrote an account of what he experienced. I looked up and saw Chris surrounded by three to four employees in a corner. I recognized Chris's voice before their appearance. A woman was telling Chris that they had been banned from the store and needed to leave, to which Chris responded with something like, Oh, come on! Can't we let bygones be bygones? The employees ignored him and continued to tell him to leave and threatened to call security. Eventually, they dispersed to do so, which is about when I began filming. The short clip shows Christine on her way out of the store, and right before exiting, she pepper sprayed the shirt of the store's assistant manager, oh who was standing God. to the side of the door. Bro, see, GameStop employees are not making enough money, bro. This is the kind of shit you gotta deal with? What a shame, dude. What a shame. Don't call anybody. Christine went back to her car and drove back home. Police arrived at the scene about half an hour after the incident and managed to find her mother, Barbara, still eating lunch at the mall. Police officers took her wait, home. Wait, 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 hold on. Chris left without his her mom? Is that... <laughs> wait, what? I'm sorry for laughing. Wait, so this whole thing happened and then Chris just disappeared without, without her, her mom. Incredible. Promptly arrested Chris and then brought her to be detained at Albert Mall Regional Jail. Wow. Two days later, an individual recorded his call to the jail, asking about the details of Chris's detainment. I would have been I, I uh, want to verify some information about an email that you have. Uh, Bro, what kind? Of, like this dude uses a fucking voice changer to ask these questions. This is ridiculous. Oh my gosh, Chandler. Uh, yeah, the name is Chris and Weston Tyler. I'm not the first person who called you about this particular issue. No, you're the third person in a row. That's why I knew it was that, bro. Okay, I'm... I'm surprised. Uh, I'd like to confirm or deny if he is in jail right now because of some incident that happened, I think, two days ago. Yeah, he's here. He is? In jail? He's here. He'll be here at video court Monday morning. Okay, uh, would you, um, add more information? He's going to be charged, uh, he's going to, uh... Oh, yeah, he got a charge for spraying gas. I think he sprayed pepper spray and something. Are the, are the police, like, allowed to do this? Like... If they if they know it's not them, because this guy knows it's not a fucking Chris or what, whoever the fuck this person is claiming to be, whatever Chandler it is. So it seems a little bizarre to me. But yeah, that's the current information that we have. Uh, there's some video on YouTube where he sprays against something to he with some uh, paper spray or something like that. I hope they're in the yeah. it's okay. Oh yeah, he's fine. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon. I appreciate all your progress. On December 29th, Christine was formally charged with the Class X felony, unlawful release of dangerous gas. She posted a hey, 2000... If that's a, if that's a crime, then I guess I need to be arrested. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm always unlawfully releasing uh, large amounts of gas because I I have horrible stomach pain sometimes. $500 bail and was allowed to return home with her next hearing scheduled for February 5th, 2015. Upon returning home, Chris wrote an exceptionally long Facebook post detailing her account of what transpired. Attention everyone! To preface what has happened recently, I simply remind everyone that Sonic the Hedgehog's arms are not freaking blue. If hashtag Sega had never changed them oh or reversed the change between February and November oh of this Lord. year in the new Sonic Boom video games and cartoon series on Cartoon Network, as well as the toys and whatever else, I would never have had to protest and rebel the way I have, including the creation of my group. Fix Sonic's arms immediately, Sega! Bro, how is it that it's everybody else's fault but uh, hers? 
Oh my god. If you just didn't do this horrible thing to Sonic, this would have never happened. Very Joker arc, in my opinion. Very Joker arc. Within my groups, I've led by example to push forward to the path of waking Sega up and forcing them to change Sonic's arm color back immediately. True. And to Very confess, important. Very I important. have done my part for real. I had personally gone into three of the four local game stops, excluding the Fashion Square one, three times to personally protest in my silent way. First attack. I printed, as seen on the Facebook group, the fronts of the Sonic Boom game inserts, affixed double-sided tape onto the backs, and affixed them onto the fronts of the respective display oh game boxes God. on the shelves. Second attack. About a week later, I checked the success of my first attack, damaged a few original inserts pretty well to full removal, and of what were still there, I made attempts to transfer the oh inserts from the gosh. original cases into behind the inserts of different games. I've had to briefly explain my reasons and the protest, and told them that they should not be selling the blue arm bandit. Okay, so this motherfucker is trying to fix the the, the covers of these things. Okay, how do you have? Why you're trying to sell a three thousand dollar car for ten thousand dollars because you are so poor, but you have the time, effort, and energy to go to stores and to try to change the boxing. That's what you're saying to me. Makes perfect sense if you really think about that. Makes a lot of sense. It's fantastic, Chris. Games in the Christine, first place, whatever. and that they should send all of their remaining stock of Sonic Boom games and stuff back to Sega to make them change Sonic's arm color back immediately. They did nothing. And one last week later, the third and final attack, and the one and only time that the Fashion Square location had been involved as well. I made up and printed faux price tag decals with a short note to discourage purchase of the Blue Arm Bandit games and promote the protesting boycott. I also had hidden all of the blue-armed Sonic toys at Toys R Us here, concealed hidden amongst the metal cupboards, amongst so they us. all would not be sold, and best boycotted for the protest. They remained hidden for the longest time of over a month, found and reshelved near the 20th of December to my personal dismay and crestfall. And at Best Buy, all copies of their Sonic Boom games are still successfully concealed and hidden from view and purchase. Last Friday. Jesus, he's really... Ugh, she, whatever. Really trying to get fucking... Really trying to, uh, like, destroy... Trying to destroy Sonic Boom sales. This is insane. This is so fucking unhinged. The 26th. My mother and I were at the mall, getting pizza and spaghetti for lunch. She had informed me of a good... Uh, wait, sorry. I know this is bizarre. Spaghetti at the mall? What are you talking... How do you get spaghetti at a mall? What? Am I, is it just, am I, do I just not go to the right malls? Or do I... Whatever. Any refrigerator deal at Sears. So after eating, I made my way to check it out. On the way to Sears, I peeked into the GameStop, and I spotted a new Skylander figure. Blast your mind. I was set to buy it, and I was going to consider okay. checking out their Wii U pre-owned software selection in their 3 for 2 deal. Innocent. I was not looking for trouble. But then this male loomed out in front of me, frightened the oh, crap yeah. out of me, and he said in a booming voice that- Interesting. Wait, that's so interesting. He's like, this male jumped out in front of me and said, whatever, you're banned. That's fine. The reason that's so interesting to me is because, like, I just thought about it now. He's probably having- or she. Chris- Christine is probably having a disproportionate amount of like issues with men because like most of the times like you know employees or I don't know in general just seems like that like most police officers tend to be men um most nerds at video game places tend to be men cuz like fucking you're a nerd you're a loser of course women don't want to be around those places you know so maybe that's part of the reason why well plus uh he tries getting he blames men for stealing girls and making uh them not available for him her them whatever fuck only scared me worse you are banned from here you need to leave now but still determined to continue my shopping i veered into the wii u direction when his female accomplice startled me and boomed in as well still feeling frightened and mentally overloaded i made a grab for my pepper spray to use in defense oh my God. i offered a few peaceful solutions but she ended up sending him to go get security so i shouted fine i'm leaving and i dropped the figure and on my oh. way out i told the male not to get anyone and we both stopped near simultaneous I still felt my own worse from where, with the fear, startle, paranoia, and I did not want him following me and causing more trouble upon me. And then in my defense, and to make my escape, I spritzed a minuscule amount of the pepper spray downward, not in his face, and then I left. God. I did not learn until much later that the spritz had done a lot worse than I had imagined it would, as well as learning that they were the so-called manager and ass manager of that particular store. It's I had okay. no idea of the contents of the pepper spray, or that it was illegal for use in certain situations in the state of Virginia at all. Well, I think that it's illegal to pepper spray somebody when you're trespassing and they're asking you to leave. I would imagine that might be illegal in every, everywhere, ever. Because you have no justification for using the pepper spray. So, you know. And I had tried this stuff on myself days before in the upstairs bathroom. A two-second spray onto my left wrist. Some what? of it got onto the bathtub wall as well. Wait, what? That's not how pepper... Are you, are you a fucking idiot? 
That's not how pepper spray works. You don't spray it on somebody's wrist. You spray it in their eye. Thank God they don't. Thank God Chris doesn't know that, I guess. Because that could have been catastrophic. Like sampling a perfume or deodorant. It took me out damn well. I had to open the windows, turn on the bathroom fan, and aim the box fan into the bathroom to air the place out. And I wiped the wall off as well. And of course, I washed my hands. It took 15 to 30 minutes to make it bearable in there again. In the end, yes, I went along peacefully when the police arrived to collect me. And I had to spend a miserable weekend in jail. And I just got out on a bond and bail, yada yada yada. In the end, I was the victim. I did not cause the original provoking. The assistant manager made the first attack onto me and provoked my defensive response. I was minding my own business, not looking for trouble. And then he startled me, similar to a potential rapist in a dark alley in a big city. Oh my Any God. of you would have done the same as I have in defense and escape. And Nobody would have ever done that at all, ever. Nobody would have made... That would have not been anybody's first thing to do in a GameStop. What are you talking about? We can sue Sega for changing Sonic's arm color and ultimately this male getting pepper sprayed. Think about it seriously. And my protest actions are not acts of vandalism, regardless of your individual perceptions. It was not vandalism, but good protest when in around 2004 at Fashion Square. I tried their new soda machines with a credit debit card slot. And then I learned of the $5 surcharge that brought my bank account into the freaking red. I subtly posted sticky note signs onto each machine shortly after. This machine charges you $5 per card use. A few days later, the original machines returned. Nobody gave me any freaking grief or complaints at all about that. And if you really want to see the whole mess happen, go find the security tape of the time of point A, my finding Blastermind to point B of my departure from the store. Now, if you will excuse me, I have a lot of much required packing to take care of. Good day. So interesting that Chris had all had no time to do any make money through commissions, but had all the time in the fucking world to harass the shit out of, out of employees at GameStop. It's incredible. Kenneth Engelhardt left a comment, pleading for Chris to understand that she entered an establishment from which she had been banned, with an item that was considered to be a weapon in the state of Virginia, and that she had no right to be there. Members of her Sonic Facebook group were similarly not supportive of her stance. Chris's assault and arrest were understandably a mass-discussed topic on the Quickie forums during the closing days of the year. In addition, Chris received some attention in more mainstream media. The video of the pepper spring received significant views on YouTube and was featured in several online publications. God. The GameStop incident was written up in an article posted on Wii U Daily, a website focusing on news related to the Nintendo Wii U console and Wii other game-related happenings. Also, entertainment website Design & Trend detailed the event in an article of their own, mistakenly calling Chris a popular internet meme creator. <laughs> on January 2nd, 2015, Chris wrote on Facebook. That well, that is a very generous perspective. I guess they are kind of a popular internet meme creator because they do create a lot of memes, or rather a lot of memes are created from them. So, She was experiencing muscle pain as she kept herself busy moving the family's belongings back into their old home. The next day, people connected with the forums reported that she was spotted arguing with security personnel at the retail Not store at Walmart, Walmart from which she had been banned. Not at Walmart! The playing the part of Renee finally texted Chris back, asking about what happened. Chris confirmed that she went to Walmart and was accused of trespassing by the managers, which she denied. She threatened to use her pepper spray on them to keep them away from Bro, her. How many fucking places is Chris, is, is Chris banned from? Chris, Christine banned from? This is fucking crazy. I'm going to Walmart later now. In solidarity. Chris confessed that she had had the pepper spray for years, but only recently decided to take it out in public in order to use it in situations of self-defense. Oh my god, dude. That's... Bro. Okay. Okay, the reason why that's like hitting me like, oh my god, is because, okay. So here's the thing. It is a very popular, it's a very popular narrative, and it's rooted in reality. That like women, when they, when they walk around, like they generally, they're let, they have, there's less defense. Okay. So a lot of times women can feel afraid to walk around, usually like at night and, or in certain situations by themselves, because men might attack them. Shitty men, not all men. But like really shitty men, so they have like pepper spray to, to to you know in case they get attacked. Chris seems to be educated of the existence of that, and the, the, the his, their response is to carry around pepper spray. That's it. The thing is, is that Chris isn't on like any hormones or anything. I don't know. You probably don't have to worry about that. Although I guess maybe Chris would have to worry because you know transphobes might might beat him up or up. Uh, sorry. I'm struggling to fucking use the right pronouns. Um, it's just fucking weird. Okay. Renee asked her how did she feel threatened by the Walmart staff, with Chris replying that their threats were akin to bullying. 
She suggested that Chris seek counseling and should call the Mental Health Association of Albert Mall, Charlottesville. Probably, yeah. In response, Chris wrote, You are being unfriendly to me and Damini. I hope your house burns down with you and your jerk boyfriend inside. Oh my Good day. God, Jesus Christ. In the meantime, Christine posted on Facebook that people should notify the American and Japanese divisions of Sega about her recent misfortunes because they decided to change Sonic's arm color. If they had not made the alteration, Chris wrote that she would have never protested in the way that she had. She oh. added that the addition of green irises for Sonic was a positive change in her opinion. She then wrote that- Used to work in a hardware store and they give the female cashiers pepper spray when they got fired. Why? Do they really do that? Did they, they ever need it? Do you know if they have, like the women ever need it? Because I could see like a really angry like male customer like just being because men get fucking dude. Here's the thing: weak men try to bully people that they perceive as weaker than themselves. So usually like sh women and children. That's why like the abusive men abuse other men. Like, excuse me, other women. Like oh, they abuse women because they're fucking weak cowards. And so like I could see some guy being like, oh, there's some fucking woman behind the cat the register. I want to get what I want. And so, like, they'll they'll be additionally, I guess you'd say, rambunctious. Uh, I could totally see that that happening. Um, in general, so I could see why they would do that. But have did they ever? Did they need it many times? Yeah, I could totally see that. that's what that's what it is. Like fucking weak men do this shit. Handlers were busy moving back into their old home, and so she was unable to access the internet via Wi-Fi for long periods of time. Chris added that she was feeling stressed, and if any individual were to make her day worse via verbal attacks or threats, she would defend herself and even retaliate if necessary, going so far. We had weird old men following us constantly to our cars and coming asking for our schedules. That's fucking so weird. Bro, like, it's, that's, that's something that I notice happens a lot more with, like, older men. Is that, like, they feel, like, super, um, they feel like, it, they, dude, they're so creepy. It's so weird. Like, I had a guy like that that I worked with. Uh, he would, con he was, like, 60-something. And he would always follow the girls to their cars, like, and he would hit on them, no matter how old they were. Like the younger girls, uh, the older women, it doesn't matter. The problem too is though that there was like young, young girls that worked there. Like you, I'm not saying that he did it because he knew that they were young. I'm just saying that like, be fucking safe. It all got to a point where like they had to do something about it. They had to create like a sexual harassment guideline because she like this kept happening. And he it didn't after he watched it, he didn't like we had to do a whole class on it. it didn't change any of his fucking behaviors. It's fucking crazy. It's crazy as to pepper spray herself. She wished for others to sincerely like her, but she felt she was unable to change anyone's mind. On January 8th, Chris wrote again that she hated Sega for allowing the blue-armed version of Sonic to continue to exist, which okay. forced her to defend herself from attack, leading to a weekend in jail. The next day, she uploaded an image macro featuring a character from the cartoon series Lilith's Pet Shop, which stated that wearing mongoose knows how you feel. Okay. Chris added a comment clarifying that she was a sad, lonely, worrying individual. Wow, so sad. On January 10th, Christine wrote a Facebook post in response to reading the article regarding the GameStop incident as written. I work at a restaurant with a lot of young female waitresses. We have to get involved a lot, uh, a lot with old guys asking their age and weird stuff. Yeah, I could see that, dude. Definitely. This shit's fucking creepy, man. That's why I'm happy to be a guy. Why would I ever want to be a stupid woman? I'm just kidding. <laughs> but seriously, though, it's like fucked up. Like, dude, men, some men just really fucking, they, they, they're fucking weird, bro. They push way too hard. That's fucking bizarre. In Wii U Daily. Off my rocker, how dare she? My protest was sound, valid, and meant to be good. And she completely ignores that on the day I had to defend myself from that ass manager. He verbally attacked and defended me. And I had no idea. He and oh, oh, offended me, not defended. Okay, I heard defended. ...of what other pains and stresses he was capable of doing, and I did not want him following me either. You all do not understand my fragile mind, nor do any of you all have any caring nor understanding to leave a mentally scarred, damaged, and flawed individual like me be at personal peace of mind. But hell no! You all keep on stressing me more and causing pleasant days gone bad on me! Especially most it's of- It's so fucked up because most of the people who are giving, like, criticisms are people that are like, Oh, Chris, I think that maybe this isn't an example of you being bullied. Like that's that's the the reality there, and Chris is just having a fucking belt out. But they're right; it's not an example of every last male in this world. All of you are nothing but immature, boorish, uncouth, and damned Neanderthals. Oh, new words. It is no wonder why a lot of women detest the lot of you, and why I am most disgusted and ashamed to have been forced to be born a damned member of your male gender. Hmph. Also on the tenth. Facebook user Dicky Manicat posted an image on Chris's Fix Sonic's Arms Immediately Sega page, which depicted the newly designed Sonic the Hedgehog, altered to look like Sonic Chu. Chris disapproved of the picture and promptly deleted it. <laughs> altered to look like Sonic Chu, bro. It's killing me. I'm fucking dying. On January 11th, 
Chris wrote a lengthy Facebook post oh, regarding her wish for people to positively like her, and that if her good day is turned to bad by people who threaten her, then she would defend herself to force those offenders to respect her. She reflected that she had been growing more paranoid ever since trolls discovered her in late 2007, in addition to an increasing number of people in real life who have shown her a difficult time. Christine felt that no good could come from killing someone else or herself, as that would only force the person into entering the next realm without any lessons learned, so she saw no need to own a gun, and felt it better to merely use mace if the situation arose. She added that she was a female soul and wanted to be addressed with female pronouns, and would give- Do you think Chris got bullied so much for good or bad actions that he can't tell, or I guess she can't tell what's good and bad because he'll just- or she'll just get bullied for it? Um, listen man, I think that Chris is an example of somebody who's been like failed by everything, every institution possible. Chris grew up in a time before uh, autism was like widely recognized and- there was more robust, though we're still not fully robust, but there's more robust services to help somebody that has autism. Chris's parents were incredibly old and just fundamentally had less energy to even put up with trying to deal with them. Uh, on top of the fact that like they seem to have like a bit of a, a disrespect for people that had like a men mental um, issues, or what would you say, like neurodivergent people? Because it seems like Chris has an ideology instilled in them of like not liking people that are slow in the minds. That's what that's what that's what Chris. That's how the way Chris speaks about the uh, other people um, with like autism. I think it was just a fundamental failure, like across the board, like through and through. And uh, you know, Chris is now a fucking social experiment for people. Unfortunately, it's crazy. Cold shoulders or stares to those who continued to call her a man. She further wrote that no one should be banned from large retail establishments for crimes less serious than gun withdrawal or robbery, since people tend to have bad days, and that they shouldn't be banned for the way they acted because of how they felt at that one moment. In closing, I, I kind of disagree. Like, you should know how to act like a fucking person in person. I mean, I obviously disagree with that. You can have a bad day, but you, like, if I'm, if most of the time when you're, I'm having a bad day and I go out, maybe I'm like a little rude on accident. Like, I'm just pissed. So, I, like, I just don't care about the people around me. So, I'm like, I'm maybe a little more rude when I'm ordering something. Um, and that's it. Like, that's as far as it goes. You know what I mean? Um, it's, I don't have like a fucking disproportionate reaction though. Christine asked to be left alone to live life in peace, since she had no intention of harming herself or anybody else. It was also on that day. Well, nobody knows your intentions in person. If you're carrying a fucking pepper spray and you're going into a, a store you're banned from, like, you're obviously there to cause a problem. That's what, that's what, that's the way everybody else would look at that last text messages to Renee, revealing to her that she felt sad and upset because she shrunk one inch in height, and that she lost Renee's love for her, despite the fact that she never expressed any loving interest for Chris. Christine came to the conclusion that Renee was in league with the trolls, and had been sharing their conversations on the forums, and in closing, oh, wished her luck yeah, to deal with true. that reality weighing down on her individual fucked up head. Okay. On January 12th, Null, the owner of the new forum site, Kiwi Farms, the successor to the Quickie Forms, shared some info concerning Christian's Club Nintendo account, which was acquired from an employee at Nintendo of America. His post listed all the Nintendo consoles she had registered with her account. Two 3DSs. Wait, one, somebody that worked there leaked it? Well, you shouldn't be one DS, them. one DSi, two DSi XLs, one Wii, and one Wii U. Jesus. He stated that she owned almost every first-party game released for the Wii U and 3DS game consoles, Jesus. and displayed a list of some notable recent purchases, which included Sonic Boom, both for the Wii U and 3DS. The fuck has a 3D Mahjong? What the fuck? Four members calculated that based on the information provided, Christine had spent between $6,000 and $19,000 for all the said Nintendo purchases. Jesus. The next day, Chris addressed this leaked list of owned consoles and games in a Facebook post, clarifying that she never purchased the Sonic Boom games. The 3DS version was actually a present handed to her by her ex-girlfriend Catherine's cousin Al after an alleged bowling outing, and registered the 3DS card that was enclosed with its Club Nintendo account. She was soon after sent the Wii U game in the mail, and has never played it. She stated okay. that being gifted the games, that she was protesting and accepting them out of politeness, did not change her stance for the game. Chris pleaded for Sega to change Sonic's arm color, since it had already caused harm to Chris, and to possibly over a thousand other people as well. Three days later, Chris wrote on Facebook that despite the judge ordering both Chris and GameStop employees to not come in contact with each other, she claimed that she received two calls from the game retailer a day after the first court hearing, signifying that they violated the court rules. I... It's uh, Chris is starting to understand that they're getting trolled, but it seems like that understanding disappears when it doubles down on their like confirmation bias. Like, oh, see? Like, you know it's a troll. GameStop's not going to reach out to them for a fucking anything. So a troll probably reached out to them, pretending to be GameStop, and then Chris, despite learning that he's, or they're constantly getting trolled, has decided to believe this one. You know what I mean? 
On January 19th, Kenneth Englehart showcased his newly purchased comic books on Facebook, one of which featured the Sonic Boom iteration of Sonic the Hedgehog on the front cover. Christine saw the post and felt betrayed. Kenneth clarified that he bought other comics as well, which featured the older design of Sonic. He later made a detailed post breaking down the percentages of the four stories in the comic book and showed- Bro, why the fuck are you even gonna buy comic books anymore? So what a waste of money. Listen, I used to buy comics a lot, but like, it's like, oh, you pay $40 a month for like an hour of reading time, maybe. You know, because like, there's not a whole lot going on. It's mostly just pictures. You know, it's, you might get a book. All right, go buy a book, nerd. ...that only 18.5% of the Sonic comic book was focused on a storyline based on the Sonic Boom universe. Three days later, Kiwi Farms user Thedon leaked a text conversation between Chris Theden. and an unknown individual, which revealed her thoughts concerning what happened at the GameStop. Chris continued to state that it was an act of self-defense, and that the ass manager scared her and made her feel intimidated. The, ass the other party told her that they felt she was unstable and potentially dangerous. Chris wrote that 99% of males were generally Neanderthal and aggressive, and that the employee of the store was allegedly <laughs> a spontaneous attacker, and oh knew no more God. about his intentions at the time than a chipmunk's bounty of bananas, hence why she was so scared of what he might do. Christine thought that if the judge read her it's Facebook posts, me. she would agree that it was a clear-cut case of self-defense, though the person she was messaging disagreed. It was around this time that Chris sent an envelope to Sega of America's headquarters in San Francisco. The envelope was filled with a large amount of glitter in an effort to produce what is called a glitter bomb, intended to cover the person <laughs> opening the envelope with glitter granules and oh cause general God. annoyance. Yeah, she that would be generally annoying. In which she threatened to send a glitter bomb to Sega every week until they changed Sonic the Hedgehog's arm color. Wow. On January 24th, Chris posted a drawing titled, My Mind is a Blank, in which she depicted herself okay. lying on the floor and blankly staring into space as the audience sees into her mind, which is a recursive depiction of Chris lying on the floor. Wow. In the accompanying text, she wrote, In case anyone was wondering what is on my mind, my mind is was a blank. It? Not that you care. I I've been very stressed. Uh -huh. And if any of you all damn bunch of people and trolls really cared a scrap about me, in reference to me as an interesting person, you all would never have hazed me on Encyclopedia Dramatica in the first place, as well as continue to haze and hate me beyond that on the damn quickie. The lot of you all from around the world have expressed unrequited hatred against me for over seven freaking years. It would have to take a lot, a lot, a lot of convincing me that you all like me truly and much at all. There have been multiple times pissing, blackmailing, deceiving, pissing. torturing, and hating on me too damn much to make me see most to any of you lot all any favorably. Good grief! Two days later, she wrote that her birthday was coming up soon, and so asked again for the required Grand Emporium Lego set, suggesting that if the trolls contributed to buying the set, she may reconsider her feelings about them. Kenneth instead suggested that Chris could create a fundraiser for a trip to the beauty spa. Christine instead reinstated her need for the Grand Emporium Lego set in a reply. She then made another Facebook post, in which she asked for more mostly straight Lego road plates from any person who had some to spare. On February 2nd, Chris relisted her Sonichu and Roastru custom-made medallions on eBay, asking people to buy them and give her positive ratings, and further commented that if people liked her, then they should also like her characters. It was on this day that YouTube user Sachmo uploaded an over one hour long documentary style video about Christian on YouTube, simply titled Christian Weston Chandler Documentary, later renamed to Christian Documentary. In addition to using existing clips related to the story, Sachmo filmed an interview with a special education teacher to offer his insight into Chris's situation. Like a special education teacher that worked with Chris or just a special education teacher? Because I feel like those are two different things. The video was made for a high school project and contains little biased commentary from its creator in an effort to detail the events of Chris's life up to that point in a largely objective manner. The video received a generally positive response and as of August 2020 has amassed over 2.2 million views. Wow, I guess that was the motivation for this. Where's that video? Is it in here? Is that a motivation for this though? Because I would doubt it. <laughs> oh, shit. We will briefly go over most of the Fuck. stories because simply there is too much to tell. On February 5th, Christine attended her court hearing regarding her pepper spring at GameStop. Ramsbeeler, a member of the Kiwi Farms who was in attendance at the courthouse, reported that the Chandlers had hired the wrong type of lawyer who did not have enough time to prepare for their case. Another Farms member, Zionista, who was also present, provided a more detailed account of their experience. Oh, Gino did their stuff first? Okay. Chris was wearing women's clothes, but didn't look like as much of a disaster as usual. Barb was with him, wearing what looked like a red wool coat. Chris looked pretty nervous while he was waiting for things to get started. Oh, so Gino was 30 episodes in, okay. He was fidgeting a lot and kept leaning over to ask her questions. I'm pretty sure I heard him ask, do you think we should tell them about our troll problems once, which made me smile inside. Naturally, even though there were two or three female PDs in the courtroom, Chris got the one brute male of the lot. <laughs> he was summoned as Mr. Chandler, which I doubt he liked much. I heard the PD make a brief comment about Chris's appearance, but didn't hear exactly what was said. The PD, 
Chris and the judge spoke with each other for about two minutes, and eventually the ruling was for a continuation on April 2nd. The two of them left the courtroom, only to come back in about a minute or two later, with Chris chiding his mother. What were you thinking, Barbara Ann? I guess Barb had already forgotten the date of the next hearing, or maybe she thought they needed to come back later in the day or something. Anyway, she and Chris spoke to the PD for another minute or two. I heard the PD say this to them. I said you're free to go. Yes, it's April 2nd. April 2nd. I can write that down for you if you want. She looked just a little annoyed, because even this short exchange was enough to hold things up. Chris and Barb were blocking the middle of the courtroom while this was happening, and the judge had to ask them to move out of the way so the next guy up could get through. The two of them left a little while later. All Chris had to say on his way out was, Welp, accompanied by a stress sigh. Graham Spieler also filmed a short clip of the Chandlers leaving the courthouse. Okay. It's so weird because, like, I, you know, when I when I had to go to court, I, I do, you know, because I was arrested before. I would, I, you, you dress up, you try to dress up nice. It's always weird when you see somebody that's like thinks they're dressed up nice, but they look like shit. It's fucking crazy. He also posted a video on YouTube of the family's house. There's Bob's greenhouse. It's like a fucking treehouse, some shit like that. Fountain. Private property sign on that chair right over there. If you can see it, I'm not sure. And there's the famous BMW to... with a B Weston uh, license plate on it. Going around with it. Wait, there's a what? See it? I'm not sure. And there's the famous BMW with a B Weston uh, license plate on it. <laughs> it's interesting that they have a, a license plate of like their own last name on it. Going around with it. Yeah, a lot of trees. After the hearing, she maintained a low profile online, making very few posts on Facebook. On February 10th, Chris shared a photo of all the medallions she had made so far to order, planning to prepare wow. them all for shipment within the same day. Wow. She later edited the post to clarify that she will be signing the orders from then on with her feminine name, Christine. Okay. The next day, she Makes expressed sense. her elation over Facebook after finding out that the Nintendo game flipped no Tatina 3D. How much do you think it would cost to make those medallions? Like, how much do you think the clay costs? Predecessor of which Chris had extensively used on her DS would be getting released onto the newer 3DS handheld console. On the 28th, Christine paid her condolences to the recently passed actor, Leonard Nimoy, quoting his often uttered phrase from the Star Trek franchise, Live long and prosper. On March 1st, Chris listed 23 more medallions up for sale on eBay and accompanied the news with a post regarding earlier criticisms from customers. My complaint is that in the past, the odd less than five people complained of their medals arriving as shoody. That is why my stellar shoody. status is below is standard. Saying shoddy? Each medallion is handmade. <laughs> shoody. <laughs> made with care and all of that, which you would could not get anywhere else, even from a plastic printing 3D printer. Nothing and nobody is absolutely perfect. Complain to eBay if you'd like me to be able to list more than 20 medals ever again. Thank you for your patronage. On the 8th, she made a list of celebrities that she would invite to a hypothetical party she would be hosting. The list included Britney Spears, Pamela Anderson, Tara Strong, Lady Gaga, Kelsey Grammer, okay. Jerry Seinfeld, Betty White, Monica Rial, Christopher Lloyd, Temple Grandin, and Seth Rogen. She acknowledged that if any of the listed individuals attempted to mess- Those aren't that bad. Those are- it's a decent list of people. Her, ...she would perceive them as trolls or cyber bullies, masquerading as the celebrities, and would okay. ignore them. Four days later, Chris <laughs> could you imagine that one of them like genuinely tried to reach out, but he thought it was a troll, so he just passed up on it? That would be fucked up. Got a little bit funny. Teen made a post arguing against the importance that Sweetheart's parents or TV show characters placed on the so-called prospects of people. She surmised that every person, regardless of how much money they are making or spending, have the same chance of success and wealth as anyone else. What? Wait, what? What do you? What? what? Regardless of how much more characters. Play Four days later. Christine made a post arguing against the importance that Sweetheart's parents or TV show characters placed on the so-called prospects of people. She surmised that every person, regardless of how much money they are making or spending, have the same chance of success and wealth as anyone else. Oh, well, that's just not true, but okay. I mean, obviously, if you have more money, especially growing up, and you have more access to resources, um, you're going to do better in life. This is an objective truth. Kim Wilson left a comment refuting this claim, writing the prospects very widely from person to person. At around this time, True. Chris began using the online dating site OKCupid again, nice, nice, updating nice. her profile username from Level Up King to Level Up Queen, and added to her description <laughs> that okay, she would only consider sense. a threesome if it involved two other women. In addition, she added new photos of herself to her um, profile, okay. including one in which she is standing in front of the mirror, wearing only a bra and pants. Kiwi Farms users noted the appearance of a rainbow wig and a box of animal laxatives in the foreground. On March 9th, Chris And a box of animal laxatives, wow. 
Okay, well, I guess sometimes you guys shit. Okay. Christine received a troublesome letter, purported to be from Sega of America's headquarters, which stated that the company acknowledged her complaints, and they resulted in increased stocking of the game due to many returns, replacing of vandalized signs, and hiring of cleanup crews to tend after the glitter oh bombs. God. As a compromise, they decided to recall all outdated Sonic merchandise and material released prior to Sonic Boom, and updated the design of the character to the improved blue-armed model. Did Chris believe Chris made this? a Facebook post, exclaiming that they misunderstood her protests. After she pleaded for her friend Anna McLaren to share the letter and let Sega know of their mistake, Anna told Chris that the letter was fake. On March 26th, Chris wrote. I told you, Chris. No, like Chris was like, I know that if a celebrity that I mentioned uh, messages me that it's a troll, I won't respond. Chris knows that the troll, or Christine knows about the trolling, but um, still believes these things are true because they want to believe that they're true. Like, it's like, oh, see, Sega, this has to be Sega, even though you know it's, you, it's a fucking confirmation bias. On a Nintendo News post regarding the low performance of the Sonic Boom video games, she said that the biggest reason for the failure was Sonic's blue arms, which were never meant to be blue. Other commenters uh, felt it. that it was more because of the glitches in the game. On the final day of March, Chris commented on a preview picture posted by the official My Little Pony Facebook page concerning okay. the plot of an upcoming episode of the cartoon series, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Okay. She wrote that after reading the synopsis of the episode in which some of the pony characters would be losing their identifying cutie marks found on their hinds, it made her want to cry sad. Their, hi their hinds? What the fuck? What kind of baby language bullshit is that? What the fuck? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't know why I'm surprised. It's Chris, but okay. Christine's insistence in keeping herself young at heart had resulted in a change in circumstances that she felt were unjust, an adult consequence brought about as a result of a childlike tantrum. With her life now colored once again with more impending court dates, Chris still failed to become an adult, not because she didn't want to grow up, but perhaps she didn't understand if she still could. Wow. Very deep, Gino. Very deep shit, brother. Very deep. Really bang it. Get the, hit the nail on the head on that one. Okay, crazy. Wow, another group, a banger. Another freaking banger. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this.